struggling to lock on Horn Frog. TCU is in the mix for a big time wide receiver in the transfer portal, but they're pretty deep at that position. Do they really need Jalen Robinson from UCF? I think they do. I'll tell you why coming up. This is Locked On Horn Frogs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here we go. <laughs> You are Locked On Horn Frogs, your daily podcast on the TCU Horn Frogs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's right. It is Locked On Horn Frogs. I'm your host, Stephen Simcox. We are on all the various podcast platforms. Also on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel Locked on Horn Frogs if you haven't yet. Thanks for making Locked on Horn Frogs your first listen every day. And again, we're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Do it yourself. Tell a friend. All those good things. Um, let's get right into the show. So TCU, this coaching staff, has been very active in the transfer portal. That's how they sort of supplemented roster development this season with a smaller class coming in from the high school ranks. Uh, in this sort of transition year. And they're in the mix right now for Jalen Robinson, who's a receiver out of uh, UCF. He's originally from Fort Worth, so he's a local kid, which that's been a theme with TCU recruiting in the transfer portal. Um, And this was something Sonny Dykes did really well at SMU, was he would bring guys back home, right? Okay, it didn't work out for you. And at SMU, it was frequently, didn't work out for you at big Power 5 school? Okay come back home, come back to the DFW area. You can play here. It'll work out. Let's get it rolling. And he had a ton of success with that. And so they've kind of targeted similar players. Um, And Jalen Robinson originally went to Oklahoma, then transferred to UCF and had a few really good seasons there. Now in 2020, he had a huge year. That was really his breakout season. 55 receptions, 979 yards, six touchdowns. In 2021, dealt with some injuries, but had 18 catches for 322 yards and two touchdowns. And in both of those seasons, this is what really jumps out to me, 17.8 yards per reception. So this is a guy that can stretch the field with his speed, um, can make contested catches and get things done. It is someone who is a threat down the field, which is not something that TCU has had outside of Quentin Johnston lately. So on the surface, like this, this feels like if you get him, great. If you don't, okay. Hey, you took your best shot. And I don't think, you know, it's catastrophic if they don't find a way to bring in Jalen Robinson. And they have some tough competition Old Miss, Tennessee, Miami. He took a visit to Miami, I believe, earlier this week. And all three of those schools, one thing that's intriguing to me about it, All three of those schools are on the forefront of name, image, and likeness. Uh, Miami has the Ruiz family, which has been very generous and giving guys deals and has been like publicly negotiating um, sort of the football and basketball players. Old Miss has been very active. Lane Kiffin, uh, we all know his personality, who he is. This world, I think, has benefited him. And, you know, Tennessee, another big SEC school that has a passionate fan base, wealthy people that are trying to get talent to Knoxville. Now, I don't think that means TCU's out of the running. I just think it's it's sort of intriguing that those are the other teams in the mix, and I'm curious to see how TCU kind of stacks up with that being the case. And Jalen has some family ties. His dad went to TCU. Um, he's from Fort Worth, as I said earlier. So you'd hope those things would be appealing. Back to the task at hand. How much do you really need him? How much of a priority is this? I think it's actually probably a bigger priority than most fans would believe. And I say this because I like the potential of this wide receivers group. I do. But I think you're banking on a lot of guys with potential. Even when we talk about Quentin Johnson. And I think Quentin Johnson could be a first round pick next year or in the in next year's draft. If he has a big year, he's got the size. He has the ability. He's shown flashes. That Oklahoma game, he dominated during stretches. That was huge. Baylor, 
had some big catches, had a TD catch, had that big one-handed catch off the flea flicker. There were games last year where he looked like the best player on the field. And even in his freshman year, they found a way to get him the ball. And when they did, it was great. And by the end of the season, he was the best receiver on the field. But still, just the production from like a yardage standpoint, from a touchdown perspective, it hasn't jumped off the page. Part of that's health. Part of that's – all of this is under the caveat, I know, of – the offensive philosophy was just mumbled and jumbled. Didn't really know what they were trying to do on offense. I think Quentin should and will be a force this year. But we've, we've kind of yet to see him put it all together throughout the season. I think that's fair to say. Quincy Brown, love it, man. I'm excited for him. I think he's poised to have a huge year. That's another guy, though. You know, didn't see a ton of production from him until late in the year. And then he started to come on. So, again, I like the opportunity there. We just haven't really seen it fully manifested yet. Um, Gunnar Henderson, the walk-on, who had a huge spring camp and got a scholarship. That's great. Haven't really seen him on the field, though. Darius Davis and Tay Barber, we know they're explosive. We know they're fast. They fit in that mold of typical slot guys. Um, Savion Williams, big physical wide receiver, another dude you could put on the outside, but the production hasn't been there. And with Jalen Robinson, you at least have a guy that was flirting with a thousand yard season, albeit at the group of five level, but UCF's going to be in the Big 12 in the next few years. That's a program that is, um, built itself up to a, a very respectable level lately. And so I think getting him on the roster would be big. It would inject some life, you know, some more life into this receiving core. It would give them another option, either in the slot or on the outside, and guy who can win one-on-one matchups. And that's something that's been missing the last few seasons. So we'll see what it ends up, what the decision ends up being. I think if they can land him, it would be beneficial from the standpoint of it's more momentum, brings more energy to the program. It's a win over some bigger programs. And then finally, just the opportunity to have another guy who can win one-on-one matchups, be a safety blanket for Chandler Morris Max or Max Duggan and stretch the field and sort of you know, bring that potential that's been lacking um, the last few seasons for TCU football. So we'll keep an eye on what his decision is. When we come back, TCU baseball making some interesting moves as they head into their final Big 12 series of the season. We'll discuss that next. Before we do that, though, I want to tell you about Built Bar. Um, Built Bar is one of my favorite sponsors because it's a product I use almost on a daily basis. I love Built Bars. They have this new flavor, Birthday Cake Puffs. Imagine dipping your finger into that plastic tub of birthday cake frosting and then opening your eyes and realizing, hey, it was only 150 calories. Well, that's the uh, special thing about Built Bars, is it's delicious, and you don't have to feel guilty about eating it. If you haven't tried the puffs, I'll let you in on a little secret. Uh, Chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar, it's delicious. And it's covered in 100% real chocolate. Um, Only 150 calories, 16 grams of protein, 9 grams of sugar, Limited time flavor, this birthday cake puff. It's an amazing option if you're looking for a healthy way to get flavor and variety in your day. Go to Built.com to get birthday cake puffs now. If you go to Built.com, use a promo code LOCKEDON15 and get 15% off your next order. Again, that's LOCKEDON15, and if you do that, you can get 15% off your next order. That's Built.com. Welcome back to Locked On Horn Frogs, segment number two coming your way. Uh, you know, Damian Ball, he's at least testing the waters of the NBA draft. I think he'll probably end up coming back when it's all said and done. But he's giving it a go. He's working out. He's trying to get ready for the NBA draft. And if you're not checking out the Locked On NBA big board, you should. Rafael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies and the author of the NBA Big Board newsletter. He's joined by multiple people, including Sam Ferris and Leif Thullen, to give fans an in-depth look into the NBA draft Mock draft, player rankings, and of course those big boards. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. So TCU baseball, take it on Kansas this weekend. Still an outside chance to win the Big 12. 
And the last few weeks we've discussed how they've just been searching on a way to figure out the starting rotation, kind of tinkering with it. Last year they threw basically a whole new combination out there. Um, Austin Crow got a chance on Friday night. That didn't go very well. He pitched on Tuesday, and so did Brett Walker. Uh, it, it really seems like Kirk Sarlos is just trying to find a way to get these guys good innings to build some confidence going into the postseason. So going into Friday night against Kansas, this got my eye. I saw Drew Davidson tweet about it. River Ridings is going to get the start for the Frogs. My first reaction to this was confusion. And in fairness, River did have one start last season. It was against Oklahoma State in the Big 12 Championship game. And he did well. I mean, he threw a couple innings of shutout baseball before giving away to Garrett Wright. Um, he started that game off on the right foot. He did what he was supposed to do. But at the time he made that start, he was throwing really well. I mean, he was their main guy in the middle innings out of the bullpen. And so it kind of made sense, you know, okay, you've used pretty much all your normal starters. Maybe River can give you a few innings here. And I guess that's the thinking. I don't know if he's going to be an opener or if they're trying to get two or three innings out of him. Um, but River's really struggled lately. And maybe this is just a, hey, we're going to try something different, see if this helps your mindset, gives you a fresh start. But it's it's just funny to me. I think, I mean, they're trying anything and everything to get this starting rotation figured out to a certain extent um, because it hasn't been working lately. So River's going to get to start Friday night. Marcelo Perez on Saturday. Marcelo takes a lot of heat, and he's had a rough couple weeks. But I, I'll say this about Marcelo Perez. This season is much worse without him filling in the gap in the starting rotation, at least momentarily. Without Marcelo Perez, um, they get swept by West Virginia because he came in that game when Cam Brown was struggling and settled things down and allowed TC to come back and win the game. They don't win that series against Oklahoma State because he sort of steadied things after a rough Friday night. He pitched well against Texas Tech, gave them a chance to win that game, which they ended up holding on and doing. I mean, he has been good in big moments. Now, lately, he struggled to find the plate, and that's always something that Marcel is going to struggle with because he's got electric stuff. He's got a lot of movement on his pitches, um, but you can't walk six guys, and that's what he did against Oklahoma. So, he needs to be better. And then on Sunday, it's it's right now, it's to be announced. Now, Drew Davidson also said they're hoping Riley Cornelio will be available to pitch on Sunday. Um, he threw a bullpen session, or he's supposed to throw a bullpen session sometime this afternoon or evening. And getting Cornelio back would be significant. Um, I, I would imagine the plan on Friday, I think river ridings will start. They'll see how long he can go. And then my guess is cam Brown might come in because he's been good on Friday nights in these relief situations, these long relief situations. So give him an opportunity to come in the game and sort of pick up where river left off. Hopefully ridings can give you a, you know, a solid couple innings. Um, so it's intriguing. The, I, I said this earlier this week, the priority for TCU baseball right now, it's, I mean, obviously you want to win games. Every time you go out there, you want to win blah, blah, blah. Right. We get that. I don't need to explain to you guys how sports works, but big picture, you need to know who you can count on in a regional, whether you're hosting that regional or you're the two seed in college station, the two seed. Um, and Knoxville, two seed and Fayetteville, wherever you need to have three guys that, you know, can give you some good innings to start games. And right now I think they have one. That's Riley Cornelio. He's healthy. And that's the list to me at the moment. So you better figure it out. They don't have a lot of time to do it. They got two more weekend series, one series here against KU to close out conference play. And then a non-conference series against Santa Clara before the Big 12 tournament. So figuring that aspect of it out is going to be paramount. Um, and then obviously if you can sweep Kansas, then, you know, you see what the heck Texas Tech does against Oklahoma State, and hopefully you're still 
you still have a chance in the last weekend of the season. And do I expect Baylor to beat OSU? No, probably not. But, hey, we'll see what happens. Maybe they can steal one. We'll keep tabs on that uh, going into Monday. This has been Locked on Horn Frogs. Thank you for joining me. It's been a fun week. Um, enjoying being on YouTube. Hope you subscribe to that. Again, Locked on Horn Frogs is part of the Locked on Podcast Network. It's your team every day.